buddy, I'm about ready to start the last modification on my Crossman 362. I'm going to put on this new valve. I'm supposed to be able to increase the speed since I'm at it. I'm going to add a bolt with an extended probe. It's going to require me to take the whole gun down. I got my 362 partially disassembled. The barrel's off. The breech is off. Here's your piston and the arm lever. This video on how to remove this, there's only one that I could find. And he was talking about how to take the safety out. So I'm going to have to just take it off, loosen this bolt right here. And I'm going to do that and then I'll be right back. There's a spring in here. You can see the blue of it there. But you have to press that forward, release the pressure on the safety, and then and it'll drop right out. Now I will go ahead and take this off. Here's the, the screw there, and I'm just using an Allen wrench. Pull this up here, and then it, the stock goes that way. I'll end up taking the screw out here. And that's probably fastened to the cylinder and this one here. And this will drop off. I'm going to have to be careful because the hammer will, hammer spring will probably go that way. I'm going to do that. There's the hammer spring out. And the back, I took that screw off there. I took this screw out here and it screws into the bottom of the valve cylinder right there. And so I gotta make sure I get this screw here right. It's the hex screw. Hammer's out and also the hammer pin is out. This stuff will need a little cleaning, but it's in pretty good shape. Starting to show some signs of dirty. The only thing left now in there is is the valve. And I will get that out and be back. Okay, there is the valve. And I'm going to push it on out here. All right, I'm going to have to just show it when I get back. You have to make it over that little hump there. Okay, here's the, the valve out. Lots of oil on there, but not too bad. It looks like it did all right. So I'm going to hang on to this somewhere in terror there on the O-ring, especially right there. So it was due for a O-ring change before long anyway. You can't really tell much difference between the two at all, but this one's got a uh, an angle port and more room inside. But when you look at them, they look exactly the same. But this is the one I'm putting in. And there is a completely, well... A mostly disassembled Crossman 362 minus the trigger mechanism, which I'm not going to mess with. There you have it. I will install this into the air tube, which is nice and clean. I had to clean that out. It wasn't too bad, but it was oily. I also cleaned off the piston and put a new suction cup on. It had a little wear and tear, not much. It could have been used a little bit longer, but since I've I'm already got it apart, I thought I might as well put a new one in. I'm going to put this in, and when I get it in, we'll do a quick test. Okay, I've got it in. Ready? I'm ready to test it out. I'll do eight eight pumps. Let's see if I can do eight pumps without any leverage here. All right, eight pumps. Yeah, you can see the port sticking a wooden dowel here, and I'm going to tap the other side of the wooden dowel with the hammer. Yeah, we're ready. It works. Now we've got the trigger housing on, and that includes the hammer and the, the I put a new hammer pin on. It's supposed to be stronger. So let's give it a, a quick test. The bolt is now pulled back.
Next step will be fairly easy, and that is just to put these uh, shoulder stock back on. It'll be that will be one screw and a, a flange here. A few other things, and then we're ready to put the barrel and the uh, breech on. We're going to test the original probe before I put in the extended probe. I'll be back when I get those two things done. I've got the I put the end on here that was just putting this one bolt through, bolt and screw through, and here's the there's a hex nut. The only thing that holds this stock on is that hex nut and the tight fit in here. I had to put the safety in. once you get that tightened down. And that is a little tricky, but you got to get that spring of the safety forward and then you slide it in. So I'm going to go ahead and put the barrel on and got her back together. I've test fired it once. We'll try it again on camera here. I went ahead and just kind of taped up a field expedient one. I did 14 pumps, so let's try it. We'll see how it does on speed next. First round is done and it didn't go so well. Feet per second were in the 400, so I didn't even write them down. Plus, I felt a sharp blast of air come from this area. Right now I'm troubleshooting this as a problem with the transfer port. There's apparently, it's a little loose there, so I went ahead and ordered these transfer valve seals, which according to the parts number, used to be standard on a lot of Crossland 2240s, 1300 series. I gotta take the breech off and put that on. There's a transfer port there. It didn't fit real tight. And when we lift it out, I'm going to go ahead and put that seal around on the bottom part of the transfer port. There's with the seal on. You can see the seal there a little bit. Seems like it's fairly tight. I also put a dab of oil, Pell gun oil on it. Well, the seal definitely made a difference. However, some weird results. It started at 677 and then finished at 647. And then I thought there's still air left in the chamber. And so I left the air in the chamber and put a pellet in without repumping it. So this is 12 pumps, firing a shot, then putting a pellet in and emptying out the chamber. And it still had 574 was the speed. On the 12 pumps, the average speed ended up being 665.5 feet per second. So there was a lot of air pressure left in the valve. So it's not very efficient at all at 12 pumps. So I downed it to 10 pumps and look at the results so far. Try one more without pumping. See how much air is left in the valve. 380. For the final results on the 10 pumps, we have an average speed of 685.3. And when I did the kinetic energy on that, that comes up to almost 15 foot pounds at 14.9. The, as already noted, the emptying out the chamber shot was 380. It seems like the uh, 10 pumps is more efficient. I think that's the proper one, at least for the regular probe. We'll see what happens with the extended probe. I've taken the bolt out of the breech. This is a standard bolt. And lined it up here against the extended probe bolt, which is a brass and it has a magnet in the back. You can see there, a magnet It's pretty high speed. Plus it's, I got a brass bolt handle. If it at least breaks even, I'll probably keep it in simply because it looks better. 
but I'm hoping it works better too. There is with the brass handle and brass extended probe. You got to admit, looks very sharp. There's the extended probe. Moving back and forth. So far the extended probe is working a little bit better. It's averaging a couple feet per second more. Two more to go to get my 10. 694. I don't think we're going to get it to a 700, but it's getting close, getting in the territory. For the 10 pumps, we had an average speed of 688, and that broke the 15 foot pound barrier. There was still quite a bit of air pressure left. The shock came at a velocity of 451, so that's a lot of air pressure left on the leftover shot. I'm running through the pellets here for you all. I just thought I'd go ahead and finish a couple more uh, with the nine pumps and I'm finding now that I'm at one, two, three, four, six that it's averaging higher than ten pumps so I'm gonna go ahead and finish out the with ten readings but look we're getting good readings off of nine so that might actually be the sweet spot. So there we have it for the nine pumps. Looks like nine pumps is the way to go. Let's take a look here. Here's the final official results. I'm going with the nine pumps. Average speed of 689 feet per second and that is 15 foot-pounds of energy.